So now we're going to look at samples in which the order of events, order of stages, matters. So you can have a bag that contains n pool balls in there, perhaps numbered 1 to n. There's two ways in which we can draw an ordered sample of size r. We can pick them with replacement. With replacement basically says you will look at the first thing you draw, and perhaps the first thing you draw is the third ball. It's your third ball, then you put it back in the bag and you draw a new ball. But the ball that you draw could be the same as the one you originally drew because you put that ball back in the bag from which you draw again. Now let's say that in this case it wasn't. It was a two, two ball. I send that back, I put that back in the bag and I draw again and let's say for the sake of argument here I draw the three ball again. And perhaps I stop right here. So I have a sample of size three with replacement and the order in which the balls appear is important, we would say that we've actually drawn here the sample three, two, three. And to highlight the fact that the order is important, we might use brackets here instead of curly brackets. You could conceivably also use round brackets Sometimes I'll do that. The curly brackets are saying that the order is not important. The round brackets or the pointy brackets, if you want, you need to give them a specific name. These would tell you that the order in which these things are drawn is important. You could also do it without replacement, so that you know if you've drawn the three ball the first time around and the two ball the second time around, by the time you draw the third ball, it's impossible for you to draw a three or a two because these balls have been removed from the bag from which you draw the pool balls. One of the main questions we would ask here how many different collections of R balls? R samples, samples of size R, can we end up with in each of these cases? So we view these as an R stage procedure. You're drawing R times and the number of potential outcomes for each of the stage will be different dependent on whether you're sampling with replacement or sampling without replacement. Here, one of the very important notions is that all of the objects, the balls in your bag of pool balls, they can be differentiated. It is easy to tell which ball you picked. You're not drawing a ball, you're drawing a specific ball. And you differentiate them with you know, the help of many things, many features. We can assume that they're numbered, that they might have a different color or a different painting pattern. If the order is important and you sample with replacement, it's actually fairly straightforward. If you replace each ball into the bag after you've picked it, then every draw is the same. I don't mean to say that every ball that you draw is the same, but the procedure for each draw is the same. The procedure for each of the stages is the same. There's n balls in your bag, there's n ways every draw can turn out. So according to the counting technique that we've seen, there's n potential outcomes for every stage. And there's r stages in total, the number of draws. And so you would get the product of n with itself, r times. That's the same thing as n to the r. So there's n to the r ways to select an ordered sample of size r with replacement from a set with n objects. We had seen before, you know, if r is equal to 3, for instance, and perhaps n is equal to 15, 
or you might have 323 as an ordered arrangement. You might also have 14, 1, 8, and so forth. And in total, you're going to have 15 to the 3 possible ordered samples with replacement. If you sample now without replacement, if you do not replace each of the ball that has been drawn at a stage into the bag after it's drawn, then your stages are different. The second stage, the second draw, the choices, the types of outcomes you can get will depend on the result of the first draw. And you don't have the same number of possible outcomes. Right, so there might be n choices for the first outcome, or n possibilities, I should say. Then once one ball has been picked in the first stage and put aside, in the second stage, you do not have n choices anymore, you have n minus one choices. Understand here, I'm not dividing, I'm just giving you the number of a stage. And the third stage, would have n minus two choices. All the way to the art stage, and we're noticing a pattern here. If we're looking at stage R, the number of choices is n minus one fewer than the stage. So n minus r minus one. In general, this product n times n minus one times n minus two times everything all the way up to n minus r minus one, or if you do the distribution of the negative sign n minus r plus one. Here we denote it by n p r. That's a calculator symbol that uh, you'll see most calculators. This p stands for permutation here. You're looking at ways to select an ordered sample of size r where r has to be smaller than or equal to n. So this number here cannot be greater than the number right here without replacement from a set of n objects. So in this case, you might see something like 14, 1, 8. Yes, that's acceptable, but you couldn't see something like 2, 3, 2. That option is not open to you. Once you've drawn a 3, you cannot draw a 3 again in a later stage. There's a notation you can use to make it easier to write all of these products. It's a factorial notation. If your integer is n, n factorial will be the product of all the integers starting from 1 up to n. So 6 factorial would be product of 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and that's 720. You can compute it directly on your computer but you could do it by hand as well. 6 times 5, 30. 30 times 4, 120. 120 times 6, 720. That works well if you have a very small n. But if your n is too big, then these numbers balloon up very, very quickly. If the size of your sample is the same as the number of objects that you could resumably pick from your uh, ordered selection without replacement, then by the time you get to the very last choice, you only have one ball left in your bag, right? And that corresponds to the number of choices here being one. And at the very first stage, when you look at your first draw, all of the bags are in the draw, and so you have your end here. In that case, the number of permutation would be n factorial. This is what we call the selection, a permutation. All of the 
digits, all of the options are permuted. They're all found in one location in your ordered sample. If the number of objects you're picking is smaller than the number of objects you have as a whole, then NPR is not a permutation anymore, but you can compute it by looking at the number of permutations and then removing, in this case this is done by division, the number of permutation of objects you didn't pick. Long story short, the formula for that is n factorial over n minus r factorial, which is the same as the product n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to n minus r plus 1. Now we'd like to be able to use the same notation for every single one of these choices, values of r, so values of r smaller than n and value of r equal to n, you can do so if you decide to set 0 factorial equal to 1. So this is a convention here. With this choice of a convention now, the formula that we have here works for every r which is smaller than or equal to n. If r is greater than n, well, you don't have any ways to complete the task. You will be running out of balls to draw from the bat if you do it without replacement. An example, how many different ways can you draw six balls in order without replacement from a bag of balls numbered 1 to 49? Well, how many ways are there to draw six balls from 49 without replacement? This would be this expression here, and according to our formula, this should be equal to 49 factorial divided by 49 minus 6 factorial, which is 49 factorial divided by 43 factorial. I mean, that's the true answer, the number of ways in which you can draw the balls in order, but if you try to compute it directly using a calculator, you will find that you are unable to do the computation. 49 factorial is just too big. It won't fit in calculator. 43 factorial either. So you can't compute it directly, but if you remember that this formula is equivalent to, write it down here, 49 times 48 times 47 times 46 times 45 times 44 times 43 factorial. It's the same thing as 49 factorial divided by 43 factorial. These cancel out and you end up with the product 49 times 48 times 47 times 46 times 45 times 44, which gives you this number here. This is something you can compute directly. It's a pretty big number, 10 billion, roughly speaking. And that would be the number of ways the actual drawing of the balls can occur for the uh, Lotto 649 if you, if you decide to play lottery games. Now this isn't the number of possible combinations because when you play Lotto 649 you don't care about the order in which these things are drawn, but if people have to go and literally manually draw the balls, there's 10 billion ways for six balls to be drawn from a list, a bag of 49 balls. If you draw them one by one and the order matters. Another example, how many six digits, <clears throat> sorry, how many six digits pin codes can you create if you're working from a set of 10 digits? Well, if you can allow digits to be repeated, for the first digit, you have 10 possibility. For the second digit, you also have 10 possibilities, all the way to the sixth digit, 10 possibilities, and there are 1 million pin codes with six digits. If the digits are not to be repeated, then you're looking for an arrangement, you're looking uh, for the number 10P6, 
How many ways are there to pick six digits from a list of 10 digits without replacement? And you can use a formula directly as well here. 10 P6, that would be equal to 10 factorial divided by 10 minus six factorial. You can probably compute that directly by, by you know, plugging in 10 in there. But you can also, using the same principle we had seen before, see this as a product, 10 times 9 times 8, all the way down to 5 times 4 factorial, divided by 4 factorial, these cancel out. The product from 10 all the way down to 5, it's about 150,000. Substantially fewer choices. It's not surprising that that number should be smaller than a million. You are imposing restrictions on which numbers could be part of the pin code. Whereas in the first instance, where we sample with replacement, or we allow numbers to be repeated, there's no restrictions. So there should be more choice.